Throughout my life, but especially in recent years, I've seen a lot of hatred and disgust towards centrists or political moderates, sometimes even greater than the hatred each side has for each other. There also seems to be quite a bit of mischaracterization of what centrism is, with increasing numbers of people thinking it as being people who assume there's a middle ground on every issue no matter how extreme, people who are apolitical, people who aren't deep thinkers, or irony-drenched hipsters who reject dichotomous narratives about politics in order to seem detached and superior to all the people who really care. That's not how I'm defining centrism in this video, however, because it's very rare to meet someone who's in the exact middle of every single issue, economic, social, or otherwise, or to meet someone who's exactly on the center of the political compass, although I have seen someone's profile picture where it was right in the middle, and I just wish that he would make a YouTube channel so bad. If that's you, please make a YouTube channel. I wanna know your thoughts on everything, I'm so curious. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about moderate politics in general, whether that's third-party voters, independents, moderate liberals, moderate conservatives, and people who generally don't have a particular ideology or party that they identify as. And I'm gonna be talking about why I feel like the disdain for these groups has been increasing in recent years. And don't worry, I will get into the argument that the two-party system is a failure and that both parties are really the same and all of that. So just wait till the end. But to start off the conversation, of course, we need to look at how political affiliation has shifted over the years and the increased polarization that we've been seeing in recent decades. Over the past two decades in particular, political polarization has grown to enormous and concerning levels, particularly amongst those who are most politically active. There is less agreement among Democrats and Republicans, and of course when it comes to the extreme ends of the political spectrum, almost no agreement whatsoever, even if they oftentimes act almost exactly like each other. Back in the day, labels like liberal Republican or conservative Democrat used to accurately describe large groups of people, but nowadays the most conservative of Democrats and the most liberal of Republicans seem to have very little in common. When it comes to the past couple elections, the divide between left and right has become even more noticeable, with around 90% of Democrats and Republicans viewing the election of Biden or Trump as creating lasting harm to our country. And as more people view polarization as an issue and the less Congress is willing to work with each other, alongside the more animosity individuals have against those with differing opinions, it's no wonder as a country we feel so politically unrepresented, frustrated, and divided. I also want to mention that, of course, this is not the most polarized America has ever been. I don't know if you're aware of this or if you've ever heard of it, but there was a little thing called a civil war that we had on this country not too long ago, where 11 states literally left the country and we had a huge bloody fight and slavery was abolished as a result. Which brings me to what I think the most valid criticism of centrism or moderate politics is, which is that some issues simply do not have a middle ground. There are some issues that are so important they cannot be compromised on. There were plenty of attempts at compromise for years and years between slave owners and free states to try and find some way that they could both work together on this whole slavery thing, but obviously real progress did not occur until the Civil War was won. And this is why I think all political parties and dispositions need to be viewed in the context of their historical moment. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna boil these political parties down to their bare essence, which is that conservatism is mostly concerned with keeping things the way they are, or in some cases reverting back to traditional ways of doing things, with progressivism usually being advocates for large scale change, whether socially, legally, and so on. Sometimes there shouldn't be compromises, for instance, when it comes to civil rights, but generally speaking, for a government to function, at least our American two-party system to function, both sides need to be able to work together on issues. And when it comes to people who are more politically moderate, I feel like they're more on the side of deciding what gets conserved and what gets changed. There's a lot of variation, obviously, the more close to the middle you get in terms of the political spectrum. I feel like generally people who gravitate towards the middle are less ideological, but again, right now in America, everyone is so ideological that that might not even be fully true. Everyone wants to look for and build utopia, but no one talks about what it would be like if we actually reached that. If we were actually in utopia, wouldn't the right side to be on either being a conservative or more of a centrist? And most people rightfully believe that utopia isn't possible, but we have also seen progressive movements have extremely disastrous results. So progress for the sake of progress isn't the goal either. And as we've seen and are currently seeing, especially in America, a lot of progressive policies are actually very regressive in nature. Also, of course, looking at history, sometimes left-wing movements and revolutions lead to millions of people dead, people being oppressed even worse than before. And the reason I bring this up is because I feel like a lot of people on the very far left just assume that change is always good and that revolution is always good. And a lot of times, oftentimes more than not really, it's not. But there's so much moral identity on both sides. And I'm going to make another video focusing specifically on the left wing of things because that's what I have more experience in. That people feel like they have to label themselves progressive or agree with everything the progressive 
progressive movement is doing because otherwise they're on the wrong side of history and are trying to prevent progress and change and so on. In the same way that a lot of people on the right who have a lot of religious morals feel like letting things change within the country and that the further we drift from being a Christian nation, the more immoral and corrupt human beings will be. But left to its own devices, radical change can implement new forms of government or even dictatorships that are much worse than what preceded them. Minority movements, even far-right minority movements, sometimes take over a government or a country, even when for many, many years they were not popular. I'm talking specifically about Nazism here. And something that I feel like always needs to be asked of people who are very politically ideological and polarized when it comes to progressives is what exactly is it they're progressing towards? And when it comes to conservatives, what exactly are they trying to conserve? I feel like these are the most important questions for both sides of the party. And this is why I'm an annoying fence sitter and so on and more of an observer maybe or a compromiser than an activist. But I'll get into that more towards the end of the video. But Americans, of course, increasingly are more ideological and stubborn. They view everything that their side does as correct. They're unwilling to criticize their own movements, their own sides, and instead will only point out the flaws in the other side. I feel like if you want a more well-rounded view of politics, just look at what each side is saying about the other ones, because usually their criticisms are even better than the actual movements and policies that they support. I guess that's kind of how it is with humans in general. We're way better at picking out the flaws in other people than in ourselves. But what bothers me the most about this political polarization and how certain people are is just how is your side right about everything? Like every single thing? The other parties are wrong about everything and your side is never contradictory or wrong? It must be so nice to be that right. Congrats on having all the right answers to everything and sorry that the only people preventing utopia and heaven on earth are the devils on the other side who are wrong about literally every single thing and are literally just evil. It must be so infuriating to not be able to get past those people. And again, obviously I think there are people who are wrong about everything, uh, political movements and parties and so on that are completely abhorrent and they're usually on the fringes. But the reason that I think that some form of moderation and compromise and so on is so important for a healthy government is that's the only way to have pluralism of ideological values and beliefs within a society. When people are so headstrong on their own personal ideology and that ideology gains power, then all of a sudden you're not allowed to have any independent thought outside of the party doctrine, outside of the totalitarian or dictatorship that you've created because democracy requires different points of view and different people's opinions and beliefs and so on. And it requires a way in which people can actually debate these things publicly and to enact change not through brute force, but through bipartisanship and so on. And you can't just view everyone Everyone slightly to the right of you as being a total Nazi ethno-nationalist and everyone slightly to the left of you as some kind of nihilistic anarchist hell-bent on burning the world down because while those groups definitely exist, painting everyone who disagrees with you with such a broad extreme brush makes you unwilling to compromise on anything and makes you unable to admit or recognize the faults within your own ideology. But moving on from this because again I do think there are valid criticisms of moderates and centrists and so on, I do want to talk about the failures of the two-party system here in America and why I feel like in this moment there are so many people who are apolitical or not interested in politics and don't think it will change anything as well as people who feel like radical change needs to be enacted. And to start off, I think it's very clear that people are disaffected from this two-party system given that in 2016 we literally had two populist candidates gaining so much traction and support. And by that I mean Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. And I think it's also of course important to mention that literally the traditional candidate Hillary Clinton lost in favor of a populist candidate who literally branded himself as anti-establishment. I think people more and more are feeling like Democrats and Republicans are really just the same team. <laughs> it's just the corporate elite and they're definitely not fully wrong in that. I do think obviously America is a very economically right-wing country and both parties sort of reflect that. And that's why I feel like Bernie Sanders, I've mentioned this in a video before, did not get really any screen time from left-wing news outlets or right-wing news outlets. I think Democrats, the DNC specifically, would much rather have Trump or an establishment Democrat than a socialist or democratic socialist because so much of American politics is tied up in a more libertarian, free market, economic policy. I do definitely wonder sometimes what would have happened if it was Bernie versus Trump. Do you guys think Trump would have won no matter what? I mean, I know Hillary did get the popular vote, um, but I'm just very curious if you guys have any insight, if you think things would have been different or if you think Trump still would have won. And then of course there's a side faction of this country that doesn't vote between 30% and 50% of people and this very clearly is a result of a lot of things. It could be that people think things are working fine. It could be that they think no politician is going to represent them 
or that all politicians are corrupt, which I mean, I can't fully disagree with. But the fact that there are so many people who do not vote at all, I feel like is just really reflective of the fact that the two party system isn't working. And I think most people don't really feel represented by politicians or the two party system. Political discourse these days also is so unsubstantive and disingenuine. The presidential debates are like so empty, like absolutely no policy is being debated. We've completely shifted from Democrats and Republicans arguing about the size of the government and the role of the economy and tax policy and so on to being totally focused on cultural issues and identity issues and the identity of the nation. And I feel like this convolutes everything and really makes us less productive politically than we should be. I mean, there's a reason that both sides are trying to divide us all on race, but that is not gonna be for this video. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that one in the future. And then of course, a lot of people are upset with the establishment and the two party system because of the effect that donors have on it. Very rich donors can basically, I don't wanna say control elections, but they can influence elections pretty easily. And again, Congress does not work with each other on anything anymore, and it's just all a huge mess. But of course, people are still very polarized when it comes to Democrats and Republicans. I don't know if the idea that they're the same party is a majority held opinion. It's more something that I've come across online and along disaffected voters and so on. Like I stated earlier, preceding the 2020 election, people had very dire views of both Trump and Biden. And I believe the voter turnout for that election was like the highest it's been maybe ever, or at least for a very long time, because people really felt like the fate of the country was between these two polar opposite figures. And there's so much political resentment on all sides. Um, back in 2016, I voted third party in the general election, and I remember people were so mad at me. I went to one of the most liberal schools in the country, which is already saying something because most schools are pretty liberal, but I voted third party and people literally were more upset at me than they were at Trump supporters. I remember before the election too, everyone was saying a, a vote for a third party is a vote for Trump. And it's like, it's not, it's a vote for a third party. But my classmates were so mad at me and they were basically like insinuating that I should just grab a brick and start building that wall because clearly I wanted Trump to win. But in reality, I just could not bring myself to vote for either Hillary Clinton or Trump. I just, I couldn't do it. The thought of it now makes me feel sick. <laughs> I also think that the resentment that I was met with is particularly interesting because I'm in California. I can understand the disdain for third party voters a little bit more if I were in a swing state, but California is so blue, like up and down. Like if you're in California, your vote doesn't matter. Like <laughs> that's just, it's just how it is. There was a recent governor recall here in this state. If you're not from here, maybe you're not aware, but basically a portion of the state wanted to recall Governor Newsom over many issues such as COVID policy and so on. And the response from the Democrats had absolutely nothing to do with policy change. I had nothing to do with how well or not the governor has governed. Literally all the political advertisements and campaigns and the rallies that I would see downtown and so on were completely unsubstantive of policy or what the alternative options are. All of the signs and ralliers just said, keep California blue and stop the Republican recall. And people had all these uh, lawn signs that were like, stop the Republican recall. Who's behind the partisan recall of Governor Gavin Newsom? Anti-vaccine QAnon extremists, violent white supremacists like the Proud Boys who attacked our nation's capital on January 6th. It's the first ad opposing the recall Governor Gavin Newsom campaign funded by the California Democratic Party. And I feel like that's just another representation of how politically polarized things are because it's no longer about whether or not a leader is effective. It's not about how they're governing or what their policies are or the effects that they've had on the people whom they're supposed to have been serving has been. It's more just about keeping California blue and making sure the other side doesn't win. It's all scare tactics. It's all team identity politics. It's just, it's just another representation about how politics now is just like sports teams. It's just wanting your side to win. And I just find the whole thing pretty frustrating. I also feel like the two party system in general necessarily leads to total head-to-head -head collision between parties because there's literally only two options. I just feel like there's a lot of things wrong with the way America runs elections and the whole system we have here. But please comment down below your opinions on all of this as well. I would love to hear them. And so for this next section, I want to sort of empathize with the extremists and talk about why people turn to extremism. And I'm not gonna spend too long on the psychological aspects of that because I talk about that so often on my channel, but a lot of people are hungry for any change whatsoever, regardless of if it's productive or not. And a lot of people do want you know, the system to burn down. They're just dissatisfied and it's not necessarily rational, but when you ignore large factions of people for long enough, they do revolt. That's just how it goes. It's always been that way. But extreme politics generally starts, of course, with dissatisfaction with the world around you, the idea that the system is unsalvageable, that it needs to be burnt down and redone, and that it can't be fixed, or that certain groups of people, whether racial groups or the bourgeoisie, for instance, need to be totally 
killed or excommunicated in order for the country to regain its national identity and be more equitable and fair to the people within it, or to just secure a more utopian way of life. And throughout my life, I've always primarily been friends with people who are like junkies or homeless or very mentally ill because like attracts like. And for many people, it's just very hard to support a system that you feel like you are outside of. When you don't feel like a contributing member of society or you don't feel like you have a community within society and its parameters, then of course you want to either destroy society or create a new one or make all these radical changes and so on because you don't feel like a part of anything. You're completely alienated and isolated and a lot of times getting screwed over by the system. Most people who are attracted to fringe politics feel like they either don't have anything or that the little that they do have is being taken from them by, say, immigration, offshore labor, social justice warriors, and so on. And the fact that people, particularly politicians, aren't working to find solutions to better the lives of not just the majority of people, but particularly the fringes of society, I feel like is leading to cultural decline and might even lead to the rise of totalitarianism again. I mean, it's very concerning the way that things are going even within the political system, obviously. But when there doesn't seem to be any consensus on how to fix things like the opioid crisis, the homelessness epidemic, the fact that housing is totally unattainable for most young people now, the longer that these major issues go unimproved or worsened, the more primed we're gonna be for some kind of radical change and it's not necessarily going to be good change. And then of course, I don't know how radical the average person is because everything is amplified on the internet, and obviously people who are more extreme are generally more political and politically active because moderation isn't exactly sexy. And also a lot of extremists, it seems, don't have solutions to problems. I mean, there's so many people who label themselves as anti-capitalist, but then they don't have any solution to capitalism. Usually when you ask these people what they want, they wanna follow like the Swedish or Nordic models, and it's like, you know that's still capitalism, right? It's just like more of a welfare state, like a mixed economy. But then of course there are also people who are anti-capitalists who legitimately want communism. I was actually on this, I was on this part of YouTube the other day, like a political part of YouTube, and I thought people at first in the comments were, were joking around. They were saying that China is a good model and that we should copy that model or the Cuban model. And I was like, I was like, like they're sarcastic, right? But then there were so many of them. And then I realized that the channel was a Marxist Leninist channel. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> how do you have millions of subscribers? But you never know how many people are just craving utopia or some kind of way to make sense of the world and are only talking about it versus the people who are actually doing it and want to make those sorts of changes, no matter how damaging. And of course, when it comes to social media, the more radical the idea, the more amplified it is. Again, it's what you're kind of consuming the most, at least in my experience. So it's somewhat hard to get a grip on how ideological and extreme people are nowadays, but I do think it's getting worsened given the polarization that we're seeing and just how little the government and the people are willing to compromise or even just talk to each other. But some concluding thoughts and some of my own personal experience and so on. I feel like what bothers me the most about this political climate is just how certain everyone is. Everyone is so convinced that they are right about everything and that their side or their party is right about everything. And it's just completely stalemating us when it comes to actual progress and so on. And I hate how nuance is no longer virtuous, but something to be opposed. I just feel like everything is shifting politically so fast. Um, I feel like I've just become a lot more moderate lately. I know a lot of people who have become a lot more extreme. A lot of people have become a lot more moderate and everyone who's stayed the same politically, I feel like now either has a new party or label that aligns with them or is simply politically homeless. I know a lot of people throw that term around, politically homeless. I feel like a lot of people don't feel represented at all and everything's just been shifting around so much that it's extremely confusing. I definitely don't feel like I have a certain political group or ideology or identity or anything like that that I can cling on to in the way that maybe when I was 18, I, I used to. And I get that I'm annoying for not making up my mind on things and people love to call people who don't make up their mind as like fence sitters and like that's even worse than picking a side, even the side that's opposite of yours and everyone wants to go to war. But I honestly just feel like the older I get, the less certain that I am. There's like a Taylor Swift lyric where she's like, uh, how can someone know everything at 18 and nothing at 22? And I don't think she's talking about politics in that song, but that's kind of how I feel. Like, I feel like when I was 16 to 20, like, I just, I knew everything. I felt like I was so right and everything I knew was correct and everyone else was just wrong and everyone else was just an idiot and they just don't get it. But then, honestly, when I went to college and I saw my own beliefs kind of reflected back at me in terms of the general public and the kind of echo chamber sort of environment that I was, I just realized how ridiculous so many of my beliefs were, how harmful and damaging they were. I really had to take a step back and now I just feel like I don't know anything and that's where I've been the past couple years. I'm just trying to make sense of the world like everybody else. 
I get that that makes people upset and people want you to just pick sides and so on, but hey, you know what? I'm just trying to just trying to live my life, <laughs> just trying to stay sane in a world that feels completely insane. And I feel like there are two kinds of people in the world, people who change politically throughout their lives and people who never change at all. And I think it's important to recognize that most people do change politically, even within their own parties. For instance, I always bring this up, but like homosexuality, the majority of conservatives now are okay with same-sex marriage and support it. That was obviously not the case 10 years ago. Things are always changing. This is not the most polarized that we've been, but the way that things are going, to me at least, is extremely concerning. And I guess this video doesn't have much of a conclusion or maybe not even much of an argument. It's more just a total rant <laughs> about politics and how extreme everything is. And I just wish we could all get along, that's all. But yeah, if you'd enjoy listening to me talk or whatever, hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed already, then that means I will see you in my next upload. Um, let me know your thoughts on this down below. Is the state of the world horrible right now? Can things be fixed? Are centrists disgusting and annoying and they make everything worse? Let me know. All right, bye.